So the GetRC Tiny Go 4K RTF is an amazing kit. So good in fact that after a year of being on the market, it ended in a tie when compared to one of the newest RTF kits on the market. I'll leave that video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. I bought this kit initially with the mindset that this would accept upgrades very easily in the future. And today that's proven me correct right now. So why make a video about all this right now? Well, the fact is I like to address the ability or lack thereof to use my own personal radio with this amazing drone. Now this has been a highly requested video for some time now. So today we're gonna be installing Express LRS on the Tiny Go 4K. Okay, so I have my Tiny Go RTF kit right here. I have the goggles right here. I have the radio and this radio here, you know, at the time it was pretty good. And you know, it's a nice mid-sized radio. It has all these switches and it's all labeled. So nothing bad there, but this left throttle here, you can probably hear it. It's very sticky and not precise, but the biggest downfall in this whole thing is just the protocol. And that's not a fault to the design of the radio. The radio is ergonomically great. And you combine three different Tiny Go 4Ks to this radio, but the protocol is, is what lets it down. So just like any other drone, why can't I fly this with my Tiny Go 4K, which is a pretty amazing drone. This thing is still in its original configuration. And that's because of this receiver right here. This is a FHSS receiver. There's not too many radios out there that is compatible with that receiver. So we're just gonna change this out, see if it's possible and see if we can bring this drone into 2022 guys. So it should be very simple, hopefully very simple, and I'll walk you through the whole process and hopefully it works, guys. So with that said, let's go to the bench and we'll get this whole process started. All right, guys, we're here at the workbench here and we have our tools, not much here actually. We have our drone here, our Tiny Go 4K, and we have our screwdriver that actually came with the Tiny Go 4K. So if you still have this, yeah. But there's no special tools required, just a Phillips screwdriver, and I have my receiver right here as well. You'll also need a soldering iron. I have mine right here, and we'll talk about this a little bit later before we start soldering. So the first thing you wanna do here is disassemble this drone. And as I said, it's pretty simple. All you have is actually like four screws on here, and it's kind of hard to see, but it's just one, two, three, and four, and that's gonna remove the canopy right here. Once we remove the canopy, we'll have more or better access to all the electronics on here, and then we'll disassemble as we go. A couple of things to note here is that when you remove this canopy, you might have this antenna here in the way, and also you have the actual DVR module that's mounted directly to the said top canopy here. So just don't remove this canopy and yank it off. So let's try to get this thing unscrewed here. All right, so here's the part that you don't want to just yank off this top canopy here, but as you can see, there's a lot still attached to it. So there's a wire that goes from the actual DVR to the VTX. So that's a straightforward one. We're just going to unplug it. All right, that was simple. I am going to try to fish this, push this grommet out. That's my method. All right, and then we can fish this antenna through it, hopefully. All right. Here's your camera. Everything is still on here. So we'll just put this to the side. We don't really need this right now. What we're going for is the board and the flight controller. So we have another plug here. We're just gonna unplug this. This goes from the flight controller to the VTX. Unplug that, and here we go. And all we're trying to do is just get access to the board. And here's the two wires that goes, or three wires that goes to the receiver back here. And it also has a plug right here as well. All right, so let's move these three screws that holds the VTX to the flight controller. Tent condition just lift off, and it did. And if you had a damaged VTX or you want to replace your VTX, then it's as simple as that. And now we have access to the full flight controller here. Let's just move that one. All right, so I'll just remove this one grommet here. 
that's all I need. So this looks good. And here's the plan here. I have my diagram here to show you guys what the plan is. Here's the diagram for the flight controller here, the F4 12 amp flight controller. So as you can see, we have the power board back here. And in the front, we have all the pads for the original receiver. So what we need to do here, this Express LRS receiver, you know, is pretty much using the interface as the crossfire. So as you can see here, this illustration says TBS Crossfire Nano, and it's usually four wires, just like the TBS Crossfire Nano as well. So we're gonna use the ground and the five volts, which are the first two right here. And there's already two wires already connected to it. So I may not disconnect those. I may just snip the wire and then connect it to this. So since this is an Express LRS, we'll be using the UART to communicate with this receiver. And then we have two free UARTs on this flight controller. This is T2 and R2. So UART 2 we'll be using to communicate with this. Now, this is very crucial here, guys. One thing to know here is when you wire this up, make sure you have the TX of the receiver going to the RX and the RX of the receiver going to the TX of the flight controller. And that's what it says right here, channel one, channel two, but it's RX and TX. I think it's time to start cutting away here. So we're gonna remove this receiver here and we're gonna install it in the same way. And it's as easy as that, snip it away. That's in the trash. Now that we have these antennas free, the receiver is now also free. And I could just cut this off right here, but it's a plug. So now I can use this receiver on another drone, guys. Um, do I wish to do that? <sighs> no, only because it's the FHSS receiver. All right, so I'm gonna fish this wire out of here because I intend to use or reuse two of the four wires, the power and the, the black, which is the ground. It's already done for me, why mess with it? So I'm gonna snip it. All right. So since we have red already being used here and black, we're gonna omit the red and the black wires from this harness. Don't need it. And we'll use the white and the violet ones for the two pads. All right, let's put this to the side. We know what the plan is. All right, so we have our soldering station here. It's pretty cool. I did a review on this LRT8868. Um, this is a pretty cool, cheap, affordable soldering or hot air station. Has your soldering iron one side and your hot air station, which we'll be using as well for doing shrink wrap work. And that's it, you can control your temperatures pretty well. So let's put this thing on. I don't have the plug, then where's the plug? Oh, that's why. So my plan here is to put tin on the flight controller or solder on the flight controller, put solder on the actual receiver, and then attach it. All right guys, we have everything here. The solder is, the soldering iron is up to temperature. I'm just gonna clean it here a little bit before I start. Make sure the tip is clean. Put that to the side. All right, so now I can move this anywhere I want to. I'm just gonna use my flux here, get these pads all nice with flux on there. And that's gonna promote really good adhesion. All right, let's try to put some solder in these pads here. I'll start from. I'll use white for TX and magenta purple for RX. All right. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna remove this yellow wire because we don't need it any longer. Just unsolder it, boom. That's done. We do need the red and the black one though. All right, so let's see here. Can I get this to go on? Yeah, I'm gonna do this right now, right here. All right, let's do this.
All right. We have a connection with the power at least. That's good. Before I solder the two wires to the T2R2, I'm just gonna position the, the receiver back in this location just to see if everything can reach. Get this thing warm and then we can shrink wrap. And the antenna is still open, so no issues there. All right, so what I wanna do here is just route this to the back here and zip tie before I measure this wire and cut it. So I'm gonna go in the same fashion as how they had it with the factory routing of the wires. So underneath here in the spirit of GIP RC. Man, that looks really good. Like it was meant to be there. That is cool, guys. Perfect. So let's just snip this thing. Gone. This should be long enough. I just to strip these two things. Let's connect these two wires and then we should be done. All right, we're gonna put the blue to the TX of this. This is precise, guys. These pads are so small. That's a good solder. Soldering is done. All the pads are in here. We're just gonna reassemble this and fire it up. All right, so we're back and we have the drone reassembled. Turned out pretty good, no snags, no surprises so far. This thing is set up, is done guys. It looks pretty good. All we have to do now is go to the computer, configure this receiver and see if it binds to my radio. All right guys, we're here at the computer and we have all of our parts here. We have our drone with the ELRS receiver built into it. Now we have our radio here. This will be our new radio for this drone with the Express LRS module in the back. And then we have our goggles here just to see that the uh, VTX still works and we can use smart audio to change our parameters. Okay, so the first thing you need is to get the Express LRS configurator where we're gonna flash this receiver and build our configuration or firmware for the receiver. And if you're doing this for the first time, also for your module. Now we're just doing the receiver here and this will vary depending on your model. It is brand specific so make sure you get the right one so let's go to the computer here take a look at the express lrs configurator as you can see we have it pulled up right here this is an older version of it i'm not using this right now but pretty much you will select your release your candidate and these things change so fast so i think they're up to now 2.0 already or 2.1 and you choose your specific model down here I've done a full video on how to flash your receiver and your TX module. I'll leave that link down below so you can refer to that video. So I've already built and made my firmware for the receiver and I already saved it to the computer. The way we're gonna flash this is via the Wi-Fi. These receivers have a built-in Wi-Fi module and they emit a hotspot. You're gonna connect to the hotspot on this and then flash it via that way. So the only way to power this receiver is through the, well, we could do two ways here. Hmm. If I plug this into the USB-C, then the receiver will be powered. So let's plug it in and see if this receiver powers up. Now, I don't have a smoke stopper this small for these PH 2.0 connectors, but typically I would use a smoke stopper before I power up my drone for the first time after doing repairs. But I'm, yeah, I'm pretty confident that there's no uh, connection or shorts in this build. So let's just try it. All right. Yep, the receiver is powered. It's a blue light. And after 20 seconds, this will go into Wi-Fi mode. So let's go down here and take a look if I see it. So it's steady blue. And in a few seconds, it should be flashing here pretty fast. 
That's a long 20 seconds. All right, I don't see it flashing. It should have been flashing here. And I don't see it here either. Okay, so we're back at the table here and I've had some time to do some research and take a deep dive into what's going on with this drone here. As you saw the computer here, I couldn't get this receiver here to do two things. One was flash and two bind to my radio. Luckily I did encounter a fluke and I was able to actually flash this receiver with the firmware that I needed. Now the reason why I can't bind this receiver to my radio is because the receiver itself is going into bootloader mode. And bootloader is when the receiver goes into a phase where it's ready to receive a firmware. And that can be done for numerous reasons. Obviously there are numerous ways to actually flash this receiver. And that's one of the ways to actually put the firmware onto the receiver. And with the receiver in that phase, nothing else is going to happen. The receiver is actually saying, I'm ready to receive information and I can't do anything else. So any kind of interaction with sending and receiving packets, any kind of inputs or transmissions from your radio is not going to be received to the receiver. So pretty much the receiver is kind of like brick doesn't know what to do. Now, the biggest thing to understand is why is this happening? Now, this happens for numerous reasons. Uh, in this case, or in most cases, it's because of the flight controller. The UART pads on the flight controller is in the low state and needs to be in a high state. In my case, yes, this GEP RC flight controller is being powered up in the low state. And that is triggering the receiver to go into bootloader mode, as I mentioned earlier. Now, one thing to know here is that this can happen from receiver to receiver, meaning it may not happen to all receivers. It may happen to only one receiver or one brand or type of receiver. Now, I did try another spare receiver and it did the exact same thing. Bootloader mode, nothing else. And you can tell it's in bootloader mode because there's a solid blue light or a solid light. So I said, okay, I have two receivers here of the same brand. They both can't be failed, but what if, they, what if they're, they're both bad? Let's go to another brand. So I went for another receiver. This one here is an EP1 with the external antenna. So this is a different brand. This is a happy model receiver. You can see I have solder on here and I tried to solder it up as well, did it, and the same thing, it went straight into bootloader mode. So your receiver may or may not encounter this. Now, the second thing is that, as I said before, it's only certain flight controls that causes this to happen. So what is the solution for this? Now, there's numerous ways to solve this issue, and the easiest way is to just switch the UART pads. So taking a look at our flight controller here, you can see that we have two UARTs. We have T1 and then we also have T2. So UART1 is being used for the camera. So we are we can't really use this unless we remap this to UART2. That's a lot of work. And we have UART2, which we are using for this receiver. So there's no additional UART. So this is not really an option for us today because we have only two UARTs. So does that mean we can't use Express LRS with this flight controller? Well, that's a possibility. There is also another way, and that is to force that pad to go from low to high. So the next best way to fix this situation is to use a pull-up resistor. And that's what we have right here. I have a set of 40 right here. Um, these are easily accessible in any major or any electronic store. Like, well, Radio Shack is no longer in existence, but a store like Radio Shack or maybe a hobby store would have that. Uh, I got mine from Amazon only because it was the weekend and most stores were closed. So I got mine from Amazon. It took only two days to get here and I have a pack of a thousand and many different ohms on here. Now going on the expresslrs.org website, it does talk about this situation here or why this is happening. And I'll leave that link below so there's further information for you guys as well. So on the Express LRS website, they do recommend you use a resistor between 300 ohms and 1000 ohms. Now I have a packet here with a thousand and I have anything between one ohm and 1000 K ohms. So I'm gonna use a 1000 ohm resistor and wire that to my RX pad. Now there's multiple ways to do this. Now I'll leave a diagram showing how to do this. So you do wanna run a wire from your RX pad, the UART RX pad to the resistor to a 3.3 volt source. Now we are kind of fortunate here because this flight controller does have a 3.3 volt source. So I'm just gonna bridge that and that should go from a low state to a high state and that should take my receiver out of bootloader mode. Now guys, 
you know, this took me a while to find. So I could put this part of the video while I was at the bench installing this. But since there's so many variances, meaning it could happen from one flight controller to another flight controller or from one receiver to another receiver, there's way too many variables there. So you may or may not have to do this step. So we're just gonna go to the bench, connect that resistor from the power to the TX pad, and then see if it comes out of bootloader mode. All right guys, so we're here back at the bench. We have our drone right here. We have all our tools and then we have our resistor, which we're gonna do here. So let's take this resistor out. As like I said before, I'm using a 1000 ohm resistor. This one here is pretty straightforward. Resistors aren't that hard to read. I have a four color resistor. The first thing that was gonna be your value. So um, I have a brown, brown is one and then black, which is zero. So that's 10, so that's two numbers, 10. The third number is your multiplier, which is red. So red, and I go right here, multiplier, and that's 100. So 10 times 100 is what? 1,000, so 1,000 ohms. That's the value of this one. Then the fourth color is just your um, tolerance, how good it is, and this is gold. So gold, 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 right here, plus or minus five. So 1,000 ohms plus or minus five, and that's exactly what it says here. It's good to check that with the package. So the white wire went to the resistor, and I have the resistor going to right here, the T here, which is the RX pad on the flight controller. So this time it should work. There we go. Looking for a flashing light. Nothing. It's still not flashing. I wonder if the Express LRS website is wrong. So it appears the expresslrs.org has this schematic wrong, at least in this application. I will say in this application, guys. The way to do it is to run it from either a 3.3 volt source to the resistor to the RX pad on the flight controller. Yeah, so the Express LRS has it wrong. ExpressLRS.org has it wrong. It says RX pad on the flight controller. You're supposed to go to the TX pad on the flight controller. So um, I'll leave a correct picture, and that's the one I was trying to avoid, but the guy does have it correct. I have a picture of the right way to do it. So from 3.3 volts to the resistor to the TX pad. In my case, I did it exactly how this person did it. It went from the 3.3 to the resistor to the RX pad on the receiver. And why is that? Because this receiver is still, this wire here is still connected to the TX pad on the flight controller and it goes to the RX pad. So no matter if you connect this resistor right here or right here, it's still gonna go to the receiver anyways. So I went from here, 3.3 resistor to the RX pad on my receiver here. And as you can see, I went to the RX on the receiver. So yeah, I went to the RX pad on the receiver here. So I'll probably take a picture and then post it on there. All right guys, so I just, Put the shrink wrap on here, use my heat gun to shrink wrap this right here. So we're all connected, everything looks good. It's protected, the resistor is actually in here. There's no resistor out here, so we're good. Um, I'm content with all of this. We're just gonna go to the desk, plug this up into beta flight, and see if this thing connects to the radio, and then we're just gonna go ahead and configure all the switches.